Welcome to Who Won the Week, your weekly dose in sports and advertising. I'm Mike Shields of Next Media. And I'm Matt Ulrich, media analyst at EDO, the TV outcomes company. All right, Matt, it's almost here. We, we, we've endured the, uh, the non-football weekend, but I should count the Pro Bowl, and the Super Bowl is upon us. Let's, I guess it's time to talk about We're getting a lot of intel this year about who's in and out. Why don't we start with what, what, are, you, what are you hearing out there? What brands are coming in? And maybe we'll, we'll talk about who's maybe a surprise exit. Yeah, I think sports betting is the first category that that, that caught our eye this week. Um, so we know that FanDuel is back with Kick of Destiny 2 with Rob Gronkowski, which we know didn't go over that well in the minds of fans and in EDO's metrics that the Kick of Destiny didn't work that well last year. So we know Why FanDuel... Is bring it, it back? Yeah, I... I, I hope they do it a little differently this year. And I think everyone does. And, and, and we'll see. I feel like Gronk has to make the kick this year. Yeah, uh, it's going to get really sure. old. Oh, and, and they have been running <laughs> that spot to promote it like crazy. So it, it better be a big event or it's going to be a huge bust, I would think. Yeah. And la- so last year, FanDuel did uh, a pre-kick ad, which significantly outperformed their Q2 Kick of Destiny ad. This year... Uh, DraftKings, which ran in Q th- quarter, the third quarter of last year's Super Bowl, DraftKings is actually doing a, a pre-kick or pre-game ad. And what we found in EDO's data, which is just a really interesting data point, is that throughout the NFL regular season, viewers were 67% more likely to engage with sports betting ads pre-kick than they were in-game. And that runs contrary to what we see for most or almost every other category, more likely to engage pre pregame and that we think is just, just because trying to, the bets in. Yeah. trying to get the bets in that makes a lot of sense that's interesting i, w- I wonder if it's going to feel like just sports betting saturation i mean these guys are very metrics driven but uh there is i wonder like we're at a certain point everybody who wants to bet on sports is going to start doing it but i know, I know every keep, states keep getting at it and stuff but i wonder if it's going to feel like overload or just drive record numbers i don't know yeah, and then we have you know this this FanDuel versus DraftKings, the the big two, what it feels like both in advertising and from, from what I understand in usage, and then we have ESPN Bet, which won't be airing because the Super Bowl is on CBS, and then we have Bet MGM, which just announced they'll make their first Super Bowl appearance, and they're going to feature Tom Brady in that spot. So that that category is going to be massive. I didn't I actually did not realize ESPN is not part of this because I was thinking about them after the. The bar stool back and forth with 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 their betting partnership. Um, what all right? That, so that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a heavy contender. Who else is in this year? Who should be watching for? So we have uh, we have we have Timu in the Super Bowl this year. So and and it's interesting. So if you look at uh, if you remember Timu, right? The and we've talked about this earlier in the season with the two of us. But Timu is the online retailer. Yep. And last year they had the Super Bowl at, at the you know be a billionaire or feel like a billionaire ad and they have been rerunning that ad but the the name timu that they said in last year's uh spot the the brand name Mm -hmm. now sounds in the new spot the 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 become a billionaire spot like temu so they've it feels like they've actually changed their brand name in some of their advertising so they did really well in last year's super bowl they had two of edio's top top 10 spots in terms of largest spikes in search engagement and we you know, we evaluate ads based on the spikes driven by mm-hmm. the ads themselves. They had two of the top 10, and we know they're going to run this year, but are they going to run as Timu or, or Temu? That is truly ba- bizarre to invest that much in high-profile advertising, building up that brand equity, and then change your name, but not to something totally different, just something that's pronounced differently. Um, seems like a recipe for confusion to me, but... But, I don't know but what if they just clarify it this year? They're yeah. just like, you know yeah. what? Forget about last year. You remember the spot from last year? It's the same song. It's the same focus on prices. But now, just forget about what you know. We're Temu. It's, maybe that's the prediction, right? They're gonna, funny. they're running as Temu, and they're just gonna make everyone forget about Timu. But people will remember that ad if they did that. That would be kind of that would be kind of hilarious. Yeah. Uh, who is out this year? Noteworthy? Who's noteworthy? That I noticed one thing that who's out is Twitter is out in terms of brand spending uh, for that. You know, second screen kind of opportunity. It seems like TikTok is going to be the place this year. At least they're trying to make that happen. But what's what's going on in terms of who are, noteworthy advertisers that are missing this year? Well, the alternate channel thing is, is interesting. I know last year State Farm was like, we're going to focus on TikTok. We're not going to focus on the big game this year with the the Schwarzenegger spot yeah. uh, during the the championship 
round, maybe they're going to be back. They haven't confirmed, I don't think. We know that the American car brands are going to be out. So Stellantis, the, the maker of Jeep, uh, Dodge, Ram, etc., and Ford and GM, all of their brands are going to be out. All right. I noticed uh, you're, you're starting to see a lot of beer brands chatter and, and, and some of those guys are going to be out, but also, and also I read something about there's going to be like maybe 14 entertainment trailers overall, and especially some big summer movies. That's going to be interesting to watch for. Who else is missing this year? Well, looks like one of the big ads uh, was last year's This is a Blue Moon commercial from, um, you know, Molson Coors. Yep. And from what we know right now, it seems like Blue Moon is probably out because Coors Light is in and they're bringing back the, the Silver Bullet train. And so... Uh, yeah, many people remember that, like just being the biggest beer yep. ad for many years in the 2000s. And so it'll be interesting to see there. They've already previewed the ad, but it'll be interesting to see that Coors Light ad go against the Michelob Ultra messy uh, Jason Sudeikis, Dan Marino ad. And I think our prediction based on what we saw last year, what we know about the ad and the celebrity influence, our prediction would be that the Michelob Ultra ad will generate more search engagement than that Coors Light Silver Bullet train does, even with the nostalgia factor. But we'll see if that's true come come Sunday. Yeah, I would think the power of Messi by alone would, would drive more engagement than that one. But that, that'll be fun. I, I wonder if we'll actually see any non-alcoholic beer being advertised. It's probably not the right audience, but that's I'm reading about how that's such a hot category uh, all of a sudden, especially with yeah. Gen Z explorer sobriety and everything like that. Um, you got any predictions for us, Matt? I mean, I'm just excited for for a for a big Super Bowl. The entertainment category is really interesting. Let's see how that kick of destiny goes. Um, EDO is going to release its ad rankings first thing in the morning on Monday. All right. So our team is going to be up late, just trying to get all of that data in. So we're going to release the rankings from top to bottom, pre-kick to post game, of which ads generated the most search engagement to the least. So. We're excited to see that ranking, and um, we hope we hope all of our customers and just the marketplace is, is excited too. Should be fun. I mean, it'd be, it'd be the first time that it's that a couple has had a Grammy and and, and Lombardi in the same same seven days or eight days or whatever. But uh, it should be wild. And Matt, where where can else where can folks find out more? Yeah, edo.com. It should be easy to get to our Super Bowl rankings on uh, next Monday morning. From there, uh, yeah, we're excited to share. All right, thanks, Matt. See you next week. Thanks, Mike. See you then.